Welcome to Community Conversations. I'm your host, Steve Mantis, and my guest today is Donna Campbell from the Occupational Health Clinics for Ontario Workers, also known as OCAL. Welcome, Donna. Thank you. It's nice to be here. So before we start getting into OCAL, let me hear a little bit about you and your journey of how you ended up working at, at OCAL, at the Occupational Health Clinic. Oh, well. Let's that, go back in time a yeah, little bit. Yeah, that goes back a ways. <laughs> I don't know if I want to go back that far. Um, okay. Uh, really, in the late 1980s, um, I was working um, in a facility w w for the developmentally challenged, and I love to work there. And I was um, very active in um, the Ontario Public Services Service Employees Union um, because at that time they were trying to put some of them into different group homes and we were trying to ensure that they would be safe in those group homes mm -hmm. and they were going to get the same kind of care. But in doing that and in my job and being active in the union, one of the things that came about was health and safety and trying to get help in the facility that I worked in, plus at a provincial level, because I became very active, and then I would be, uh, I became a staff rep. I sat on the executive board at OPSU. My passion was health and safety. But we were finding <coughs> at that time that the only body that we could really get to help us was the Ministry of Labor. If you needed a hygienist or a doctor in occupational health, to look at the issues in the workplace, that was what was available. Mm -hmm. And this is back now in the 80s and 90s? I'd say about 1987. Okay. Right? Okay. Late 80s. And we were um, struggling because if you brought in the Ministry of Labor, it was usually what would happen, it was a win and a lose, you know, and it didn't build relationships mm -hmm. and it didn't help the internal responsibility system. So. Although it was one way to do it, it wasn't, we didn't feel it was the best way. We wanted to be part of the solutions. And so there was a large group of us from a whole lot of different unions. And we said, let's get these clinics going. Clinics that would be expert and accessible and acceptable to both workers and to employers. Okay. And we went to the Ontario Federation of Labor. They have a large conference where all the unions get together every year and we put forward a motion on the floor to lobby for these clinics that got the emotion got approved the emotion got approved and we worked with our the presidents of our unions and said we want to work together we want these clinics and we they started to lobby for money and just because of the political situation at the time there was uh, one clinic that was run by a Stan Gray in Hamilton. Okay. So this was from, a model from, you were able to yeah, look at from and local kind of go, 1005. Hey. Yeah. And at that time, there wasn't enough money really to keep that clinic open. But we knew we needed this because it was helping not only workers, it was helping employers. Oh, okay. So, uh, and it was also quite political at the time. But... We, we managed to, there were some backroom conversations and whatnot, and before you knew it, there were two clinics, one in Hamilton and one in Toronto. The Occupational Health Clinics for Ontario Workers got funding through the Ministry of Labor. And this was still that late 80s still? Were, were this we? was about, yeah, about 87. I think the first one opened in Hamilton in 89. Okay. In Toronto, and then in 91 came Sudbury, and Windsor, and um, then came uh, Thunder Bay in t at, in 2010. Like it was quite a quite a time later. So these so this was really to try to address the need that you saw at your workplace for technical ex expertise, health related, health and safety related expertise to to problem solve, help to problem solve some of the problems you were facing. The occupational uh, or industrial hygiene, hygienist, you know, to look at indoor air quality, the chemicals, uh, the biological issues, that type of thing. Ergonomists were, it was a name on the horizon. 
at that time, yes. we, we started to hear about them mm -hmm. so that they could look at work design and help us with injuries. Um, and that, that happened um, probably maybe three years after the clinic started, we started hiring some ergonomists. Um, doctors, at that time, I think there was four in all of Canada if they were an occupational health physician. So this is a special designation for doctors, like in like you know surgery or pediatrics. Occupational health occupational is one of those health specialties. Is one of those. Oh, okay. And the general practitioner has usually will have very little uh, training, especially at that time, mm -hmm. in occupational health. Okay. It is a designation beyond the average physician will look, um, will diagnose, and they will treat, but they don't say where do you work. What's the cause, right. and how do we prevent that? Um, and that's we were looking for those doctors. We needed those doctors at the time uh, to help us to be, because it's we wanted to identify what the diseases and the injuries were. Yes. But more than that, we wanted to prevent them. And unless you identify, you can't prevent, which is kind of the whole thing that OCAL works on. Uh, into uh, prevention through intervention. Um, if you look at our literature now, that's what's on the front of a lot of it. Right on. Yeah. So you were really in on the ground floor here, there in Sudbury. Yes. And you, you started working with folks within your union and other groups, other unions, yes. to create a clinic there in Sudbury. And you got it in 1991, is that? Yes, in Sudbury, yes. It was in 1991 I was hired to open a clinic in, Thun in uh, Sudbury. So you entered on the ground floor as the manager of the clinic? Yes. Well, yeah, it wasn't I, that I was great. hired at the as the executive director, yes. When they, because I was living in Timmins at the time. Okay. And then they opened it in, in the clinic in Sudbury, and I applied for the position, and um, I, I got that uh, the ED position. Well, it, it sure just seems to make sense, you know, for someone that comes out of the health and safety world who's lobbying for better programs and a program comes and then it's a natural fit. Yes, yes. Actually, a lot of people didn't know much about the clinics at that time, right? And um, I guess it just did seem to be a natural fit. It was something I really wanted to do and I couldn't have been happier. So it's been, you know, 24 years now and uh, I'm just getting ready to retire from oh OCAL. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, we're going to learn more about the clinic and the services and uh, it's, uh, it uh, provides. But we need to take a short break. We'll be back. Please stay with us. <laughs> 